The ground beneath this remote Peruvian mountainside conceals copper deposits valued at hundreds of billions of dollars. Yet this same territory presents mining conditions so extreme that it has broken the resolve of multiple international corporations. Companies from several nations have attempted to extract these mineral riches, only to retreat in failure. Industry veterans openly declared that no entity possessed the capability to successfully operate under such punishing circumstances. Then China entered the picture with a decision that stunned the global mining sector. A $7 billion acquisition of what insiders called the most difficult copper operation on earth. Critics immediately dismissed the move as financial suicide. A decade has passed. Those same skeptics have gone quiet, while some now watch with barely concealed frustration as the mine operates at full capacity. The Las Bambas copper deposit sits high in the Peruvian Andes, perched at elevations exceeding 4,000 meters above sea level. The environment alone functions as a natural barrier to industrial development. Year-round temperatures plunge to negative 10 degrees Celsius, while atmospheric oxygen concentrations hover around 60% of what exists at sea level. Workers experience debilitating altitude sickness within hours of arrival. Severe migraines, respiratory distress, and physical weakness from minimal exertion. Snowstorms batter the site more than 200 days annually, regularly shutting down all operations. Equipment freezes solid. Water lines turn to ice blocks. One early exploration crew abandoned their entire encampment after a two-week blizzard made the location uninhabitable. Transportation infrastructure presents equally formidable obstacles. A single unpaved access road winds through the mountains, its surface littered with loose gravel and treacherous ice formations. The route's instability makes moving heavy mining machinery a logistical nightmare. Large equipment must be completely disassembled, transported piece by piece, then reassembled on site, a process that triples normal transportation expenses. In 2013, Swiss mining conglomerate Glencore attempted to deliver a massive ore crusher to the location. The transport vehicle lost control on a cliffside section, sending the multi-million dollar equipment tumbling into a ravine. Direct losses exceeded $50 million from that single incident alone. Environmental regulations compound these technical challenges significantly. The mine operates within the Aparimac region, which sits in a protected watershed zone feeding into the upper Amazon River basin. Peruvian environmental law mandates that copper ion concentrations in mining discharge water remain below 0.1 mg per liter, a threshold roughly one fifteenth as permissive as standard drinking water regulations. Back in 2009, a Canadian mining firm initiated development at this location, causing measurable ecological damage to surrounding waterways local authorities levied a $20 million fine against the company and revoked their operating permits, forcing complete withdrawal. Given this constellation of obstacles, the world's largest mining corporations reached unanimous consensus. Las Bambas represented a trap, not an opportunity. Industry leaders publicly stated they would never attempt development there, regardless of the deposit's size. The risk-reward calculation simply didn't justify engagement. Against this backdrop of universal rejection, China's decision to acquire full ownership through a $7 billion transaction appeared incomprehensible to outside observers. Financial analysts questioned whether Chinese leadership understood the project's complexity. Mining consultants predicted catastrophic losses. Yet the transaction proceeded regardless. Understanding China's motivation requires examining its position in global copper markets. As the world's manufacturing hub, China consumes copper quantities rivaling the entire European Union's annual demand. This massive appetite creates a fundamental vulnerability. Domestic copper resources cannot meet industrial requirements. China has identified 2,250 separate copper deposits within its borders containing cumulative reserves around 99 million tons.
When measured against global land-based copper reserves totaling approximately 700 million tons, China controls merely 3.9% of the world's supply, despite occupying 9.6 million square kilometers of territory. Import dependence reached critical levels years ago. By 2014, China was importing 4.5 million tons of refined copper annually, with 80% sourced from Latin American suppliers, primarily Chile and Peru. That same year, a labor strike at Chile's state-owned copper corporation triggered a 5% price spike in Chinese domestic markets within 24 hours. The incident crystallized a harsh reality. Without secured resource supply chains, even the world's most advanced manufacturing infrastructure remains fundamentally vulnerable to external disruption. Industrial transformation intensified this resource pressure dramatically. China's shift toward electric vehicle production created exponential increases in copper demand. Each electric vehicle requires approximately four times more copper than conventional combustion engine automobiles. The metal serves critical functions in electric motors, battery systems, and charging infrastructure. With annual electric vehicle production approaching 5 million units and climbing, copper shortages threaten to become a bottleneck constraining the entire clean energy transition. Within this strategic context, Las Bombas represented more than a mining asset. It embodied resource security. The deposit contains verified copper reserves exceeding 10 million tons, sufficient to supply critical manufacturing sectors for decades. Securing this supply became a national priority. The Chinese government orchestrated a $7 billion syndicated loan package involving multiple state banks, setting records for cross-border mining sector financing. Western media coverage portrayed the acquisition as reckless overreach, a vanity project destined for failure. Ten years later, satellite imagery tells a different story. The transformation visible from space reveals the extent of infrastructure development. The treacherous access road has been replaced by a wide paved transportation corridor designed for heavy industrial traffic. The core mining area now hosts a mineral processing facility spanning nearly 100 acres, equipped with automated sorting systems operating continuously. Copper concentrate produced at the site moves via specialized freight trains through the Andes to Pacific Coast shipping terminals, then across the ocean to Chinese refineries. The operation that experts declared impossible now runs at industrial scale. Western mining executives who initially dismissed the project now study its progress with intense interest. They recognize that continuous production from Las Bombas provides China with substantial strategic advantages in global resource markets. The economic returns already exceed initial projections by significant margins. Yet few outside China fully understand the engineering innovations and problem-solving approaches that enabled this transformation. Industry professionals now describe Las Bombas development as equivalent to summiting Mount Everest in the mining sector, a technical achievement that redefines what's considered possible. The Chinese engineering teams that first arrived at the site confronted challenges immediately. Three consecutive months of dust storms prevented basic camp establishment. Engineers conducted initial surveys while wearing respirators, documenting conditions through swirling sand clouds. The Andes foothills present extremely unstable geology. A single rainfall event triggered a massive landslide that destroyed a newly constructed access road, trapping more than 30 workers mid-mountain. Helicopter supply drops sustained the isolated crew until ground rescue became possible. Equipment failures plagued early operations constantly. Standard mining machinery malfunctions at high altitude due to reduced oxygen combustion and increased solar radiation exposure. Chinese engineers partnered with domestic research institutions to design specialized equipment rated for extreme altitude conditions. Seismic activity created additional complications. The region experiences frequent earthquakes that repeatedly damaged underground infrastructure. The primary mine shaft required three complete reconstructions after geological shifts compromised structural integrity. Each reconstruction consumed hundreds of millions of yuan in additional investment.
Confronting the transportation crisis demanded innovative thinking. Engineering teams deployed drone-based terrain mapping to identify optimal route paths through the mountains. Heavy excavation equipment carved a four-lane bi-directional transportation corridor directly through cliff faces where the original road proved inadequate. Worker safety systems received similar technological upgrades. Each employee now wears a smart helmet monitoring vital signs in real time. Heart rate, blood oxygen levels, and body temperature. Data streams to central monitoring stations where medical personnel can identify health emergencies before they become critical. In Lima, Peru's capital, Chinese companies invested $100 million constructing an advanced remote operations center. Leveraging 5G network connectivity, engineers established comprehensive automation systems enabling remote control of mining operations from thousands of kilometers away. Blasting sequences, ore processing, and heavy equipment operation can now be managed from climate-controlled facilities rather than on-site in harsh conditions. Approximately 80% of mining functions now occur through remote systems. This transition to smart mine operations fundamentally altered the project's risk profile. In 2023, when sensors detected precursor signals of a major landslide, the automated early warning system triggered complete personnel evacuation within 10 minutes. The slide occurred exactly as predicted, but all workers had already reached safe zones. Community relations presented challenges as significant as technical obstacles. In 2021, local residents influenced by activist campaigns raised concerns that mining operations would contaminate water supplies. Protests forced a 50-day operational suspension that sent global copper prices sharply higher. Rather than escalating confrontation, Chinese management initiated sustained dialogue with Peruvian government officials and community leaders. The resulting agreements included increased profit-sharing arrangements with surrounding communities and an 80 million yuan investment in the Quilabamba Bridge, cutting commute times for area residents by four hours. Environmental protection measures exceeded regulatory requirements substantially. Chinese companies deployed advanced water treatment systems at Las Bombas then funded large-scale ecological restoration programs involving 34 communities. These initiatives established 368 hectares of reforestation projects using native species. Seven communities received support for aquaculture programs that released 600,000 trout fingerlings into local waterways, actively rebuilding ecosystems damaged by previous mining attempts. The Heart of Las Bambas Community Engagement Program organizes regular public forums where residents directly communicate concerns and proposals to mine management. This transparent approach transformed local sentiment. Today, 60% of young people in surrounding towns actively seek employment at the mine, where wages average three times the regional median income. The financial returns from Las Bambas have exceeded even optimistic projections. At current market prices around $10,000 per metric ton, the 2.7 million tons of copper already extracted represent $27 billion in realized value. Remaining recoverable reserves exceed 10 million tons, implying total deposit value approaching $100 billion. Annual production reaches 400,000 tons of copper concentrate, loaded onto bulk carriers at Peru's Matarani port facility. 23 days later, these shipments arrive at Nanjing port, then move to smelters operated by Jiangxi copper and Tongling non-ferrous metals. The refined copper becomes essential components in electric vehicle motors, photovoltaic power station cabling, and advanced electronics manufacturing. For Peru, Las Bombas functions as a regional economic catalyst. The Aparimac region hosting the mine has experienced dramatic prosperity increases. Per capita GDP tripled from $1,300 in 2014 to $4,000 by 2023. Tax revenues from mining operations exceed $1.7 billion cumulatively, equivalent to 5% of Peru's entire annual fiscal budget. These funds support infrastructure development, education programs, and healthcare expansion throughout the region.
Chinese companies continue expanding their investment beyond core mining operations. A $120 million port modernization project at Matarani increased copper transport efficiency by 50%, reducing shipping bottlenecks. Joint ventures with Peruvian firms are constructing smelting facilities that will process copper concentrate into semi-finished products domestically, capturing more value within Peru's economy before export. Plans include a large-scale solar power installation at the mine site itself, potentially achieving 100% renewable energy operations. Additionally, China has committed $200 million supporting the Belgrano Freight Railway renovation project. The first phase now operates at full capacity, handling 2.65 million tons annually while reducing transportation costs by 80%. As global electrification accelerates, copper demand continues climbing steeply. Electric vehicles, renewable energy systems, and digital infrastructure all require massive copper quantities. Within this context, Las Bambas represents far more than a single mining asset. It exemplifies a broader Chinese strategy of securing critical resource supplies through direct investment and operational control. By transforming an asset that every major mining corporation deemed unworkable into a productive, profitable operation, China has demonstrated both technical capability and strategic patience. The Las Bombas story reveals how resource geography is being quietly redrawn. Countries that control essential materials hold advantages in emerging industries that will define the coming decades. China's willingness to invest heavily in difficult projects that others rejected now positions it favorably as competition for strategic resources intensifies globally. The mine that was once called impossible to operate now ships hundreds of thousands of tons of copper annually, feeding manufacturing facilities that produce the technologies shaping our future. What began as a gamble dismissed by skeptics has become a case study in how determination, innovation, and long-term thinking can overcome obstacles that initially appear insurmountable.